Father, we just thank you that we stand in your love today. We thank you, Lord, that this is not about a, a preacher or a song or anything else other than you, Jesus. To you, we give you all the glory. And we thank you, Jesus, that you're the God of freedom and you're the God of deliverance and you're the God who sets us free and forgives us. Lord, we love you. Why don't you just spend a minute just thanking God and praising God, church. We bless you, Lord. Come on, verbalize it, church. Verbalize it. You folks online, you verbalize it. Be part of the service. Oh, praise your name, Lord. We bless your name, Jesus. We glorify you, Father. Glory to you, Father. Glory to you, merciful God. King of kings and Lord of lords. We bless your name, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, you can have a seat. Praise the Lord. Thanks, Ben. That was terrific. Put your hands together for our band. Aren't we blessed for them? If you're, if you're new today, uh, welcome. Uh, it's great to have you. As I said before, my name's Arthur. And um, if you were like me when you're watching those videos, the ones of the... Um, Bonfire thing. I was actually getting car sick or something. I was, I was going so fast. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so thanks for putting that together, Daddy. And uh, there is another version that is a bit slower. We might play it one day. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And really encourage the guys to come to the men's breakfast on, on Saturday morning. Puds, where are you? Stand up and turn around. See this handsome young man here. Well, that wasn't turning around. That was like waving them side to side. That's the, there you go. There you go, bro. So, man, if you want to know more, see John or any of the, the team. We've been talking about blessing and cursing for the last six weeks. And today is the, the end of this particular series. And today we're going to be praying. So it's like you've come to the doctors today. You know, sometimes you go to the doctors and you get a, you get a full medical well, I'm going to give you a full spiritual medical checkup today. I'm going to take you through nine areas that actually block people from moving in the power and life of God. Move them, um, block them from living in the, in the, um, yeah, the power of God, the, the life of God, and um, the power. I've lost my words there. No, they're just the, the moving of the Holy Spirit. There's people who kind of start to move in the gifts of the Spirit, and then they get stumped. They only go so far. There's people who start in the Christian walk, and they get stumped. They only go so far. And to, um, when I was praying about this, because today was really just about me breaking um, curses off people's lives, and obviously we're going to do that, but then the Holy Spirit was just quickening all these other things, and it's saying, no, I want you to do more than that. I want you to... Explain to people how there's other areas in our lives that often we just kind of just think it's normal and we just kind of put up with it and get on with life. It's like you're walking through life on a, with a limp and you just think, oh, this is the way everybody walks. No, it's not. So we're going to, we're going to do a checkup with you today. So I encourage you to come with an open heart. And even if some of the things don't apply to you when we come to pray, I just encourage you to pray. I pray over these things regularly over my own life. So I encourage you to pray as well. So how this is going to work is I'm going to do a little bit of teaching on an area, then we're going to pray. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And as I lead you in a prayer, I'm going to encourage you to pray it out loud, loud enough for your own ears to hear it. And then we'll move on to the next one and stuff. So it's just a simple, it's a simple um, exercise we're going to do. And then lastly, we'll break the curse and we'll see what God wants to do. Now, what Often happens in these arenas, in these kind of times, is God manifests his presence. And as he manifests his presence, things can happen in people's lives. And it's okay. It's nothing to worry about. It's just God. And one of those manifestations is healing. So we're at the end of what I'm going to talk to you about. We're going to partake in communion, and we're going to pray for healing. And we have people on either side that will be praying and for healing, and uh, I just, I've just seen it, so I just know it happens. So if you have a healing need in your life, um, we're going to release healing today in this place. So um, that would be exciting, wouldn't it? Um, but it's all about Jesus. This is not about a man. It's not about a person. It's not about a system. It's just about Jesus. And um, keep your eyes on Jesus. Amen? 
Amen. So, Father, we just commit the word to you today. We ask that you would just um, unblock us, as it were, and, uh, Lord, that we would flow in the life and the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, that the gifts of the Spirit would be released in us, the fruit of the Spirit would be matured in us. Lord, as we go forward into this world, that we would be the lighthouses that you've called us to be in Jesus' name. So last week we talked about um, enforcing what Jesus has done. So Jesus, um, there was an exchange on the cross. If you haven't been caught up with the series, I really encourage you, catch up with the series. Even if you've been here, catch up with the series because God can do things as you're watching it. It's on the YouTube channel for the last six weeks. I really encourage you to do it. But last week we talked a little bit about the exchange, the exchange that Jesus made on the cross, that Jesus was punished, that I might be forgiven. That Jesus was wounded, that I might be healed. That Jesus was made sin with my sinfulness, that I might be righteous with his righteousness. That Jesus died my death, that I might share his life. That Jesus became poor with my poverty, that I might become rich with his riches. Jesus bore my shame, that I might share in his glory. Jesus endured my rejection, that I might have acceptance. Jesus became a curse, that I might receive the blessing. And as I said before, we can talk about that, and I can talk about enforcing it, and I can try and teach you how to do it. But if you have these blockages in your life, you're never going to do it. So I really, really encourage you to put aside your pride and just sort of say, God, what is it you're saying to me? And uh, are these things in my life? And uh, yeah, I just believe God's going to do it today for you. And uh, a whole bunch of reasons I, I believe that, but anyway, I won't go into them just now. The first area is the area of fear. It's great that we sung that song just before the sermon. So many people, so many Christians live in fear. But Christ has destroyed the power of fear. He's destroyed sin and death. Yet often because of the unknown, we live in fear. Because we don't know what's going to be behind that door. Or uh, the what if, you know, the fear of the what if. So many people live in fear. And as a result, when God is doing something, we often don't open ourselves to him because we don't understand that this becomes a blockage to God moving in our lives. God has defeated fear. And he's saying, do not be afraid. In fact, the Bible says it like 365 times. And so there's one for every day. Don't be afraid. And, um, you know, and Paul reinforces this in 2 Timothy 1.7. God did not give us a, power, a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and self control. So I want to pray, and I'm going to lead you in prayer, and I want you to pray over yourself. You've got to break things over yourself today. So if you would just bow your heads and just pray this after me. Lord Jesus, I repent of my fear. I renounce and give the spirit of fear no ground in my life. I thank you, Jesus, that you have given me a spirit of love. Of power and self control. And I receive it now in Jesus' name. So that's the first area is fear. The second area is anxiety. There are so many Christians who live in anxiety, it blocks the moving of God's power in our lives. We forget. The scripture tells us, like in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, interesting that Julie mentioned it before, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways. Submit to him and he will make your path straight. So in, in the opposite of anxiety is trust. Paul says, don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Jesus himself said in Matthew 6, therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life. What you will eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear, is not life more than food, the body more than clothes? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? So do not worry saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? But seek first. Everybody say, seek first. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So hopefully you're getting the message that Jesus is saying, stop being anxious. Don't live anxiously. Don't live in worry. It will become a blockage for you in the area of the Spirit. So let me lead you in another prayer. Let's bow our heads. 
Lord Jesus, I renounce and repent of my anxiousness. I give the spirit of anxiousness no ground in my life. I thank you, Jesus, that I can trust in you. As I seek first the kingdom of God, you'll take care of everything else. Lord, replace my worry with your peace. In Jesus' name. Amen. A third area of blockage in people's lives and moving in the power of the Spirit is ignorance of God's Word. Ignorance of God's Word and God's will. It strikes me that there's so many Christians who don't know the clear, simple truths and teachings of the Word of God. When this happens, it becomes a blockage to us. And that's not good because God himself says in Isaiah 5, verse 13, Therefore my people have gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. No knowledge. Again, in Hosea 4, 6, God says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Now, this lack of knowledge, we might just sort of, we, we might call that today ignorance. Ignorance means I have no knowledge of. We're all ignorant of something in our life. I have no knowledge of medical things or scientific things and stuff like that. So I'm ignorant in those areas. And many people are ignorant about God's basic truths. And even Christians, people of faith, are ignorant about God's, God's word and God's will. And because of that, it becomes a blockage in their life. So I want to lead you in another prayer of repentance for this. So let's pray again. Lord, I acknowledge that in many ways I'm ignorant of your word, often through my own fault. And God, I confess this as a sin. And I repent of it. I ask you to forgive me and help me to seek the truth from this day forward in Jesus' name. So coupled with that, ignorance is unbelief. Unbelief. The New Testament plainly calls unbelief a sin. Hebrews 3, verses 12 and 13. And remember, this is written to people of faith. It says, see to it, brothers and sisters, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. But encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. So unbelief actually leads to hardness of heart. It becomes a blockage in you moving in the spirit realm. And there's not one of us, and myself included, that doesn't need to ask for forgiveness for unbelief. We all struggle with this in some areas of our life. But when, I tell you, when you do deal with this, when you do repent of this, and then we change the atmosphere in our life, and we open it up for the moving and the working of the Holy Spirit. So let me lead you again in another prayer. Lord God, I come to you in Jesus' name, and I confess my sin of unbelief. I do not try to excuse it. I accept that I am responsible for it. And I am sorry for it. Lord, forgive me and deliver me from unbelief. Impart your faith to me. And today, I want to declare that I believe in God the Father. I believe in Jesus Christ, His Son. I believe in God the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Bible, that God's word is truth. The fifth area of blockage is unconfessed sin. So Proverbs 28 lays down a principle. He who covers his sin will not prosper, but whoever confesses and renounces their sin finds mercy. Did you hear that? He who covers his sin will not prosper, but whoever confesses and renounces their sin finds mercy. It's, it's weird to me that as clear as it is in the Scripture, that confessing our sin enables us to draw near to God. How many people don't do that? How many Christians don't do that? People have sins that have been, not been acknowledged. 
They've not been confessed. They've not been repented of. We've covered them up and we've hidden them away. And we've put them in a cupboard somewhere. And it's like as though people think, if I don't confess my sins, God will never know I've, I've done it. And it's like crazy. Folks, God knows that already. And God isn't embarrassed or shocked by your sin. He knows it already. Friends, he's not asking you to confess in order to find out what you've done. God is asking you to confess because it releases you and he can help you. So when God's walking in the garden and Adam and Eve fall and, and they go hide because they hear God coming, and God says, Adam, where are you? It wasn't because God didn't know where he was. He wanted Adam to take responsibility for what had happened and to come back into community. But often we hold on to our hidden sins and it breaks community with God and it hinders the moving of the Holy Spirit's power and life in you. And it hinders your prayers. It hinders your prayers. So today, we're going to have an opportunity in the presence of the Holy Spirit to see if there's any unconfessed sin in your heart and life. And then very simply, very quietly, I'm going to invite you to confess the specific sin or sins that the Holy Spirit shows you. Now remember that the scripture says in 1 John 1, 9, now if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So, if you, in your faithfulness, will confess to God, He is committed that in His faithfulness, He will forgive you and cleanse you. So why don't you just close your eyes for a second. And I just want to pray over you. I just want to pray that, that um, yeah, Holy Spirit, I pray that you would just come and just show each and every person here, if there is something that they have done or said, Something they put in a closet somewhere from years ago. They've never brought it into the light. Maybe it's been a, a fractured relationship or an action. Maybe it's been years ago or yesterday. But Father, I pray that you would specifically show people right now. So why don't you pray this after me? Lord Jesus, I confess all the sin committed by me. And if you have specific sins, if the Holy Spirit showed you something, no matter how small you might think it is, you've confessed that quietly right now. Be specific about confessing your sins. Don't just do a blanket for giving my sins. Be specific about your sins. It's the key to revival in your life. Maybe it's attitudinal. Words said, actions done. So just pray after me. Thank you, God for your grace and for forgiving me and cleansing me. I receive your forgiveness now. Amen. And I want to say to you, if you have confessed your sins as God's representative here in front of you today on the authority of his words, your sins are forgiven. You are forgiven. You are cleansed. The next area... Uh, there's a blockage for us in moving in the power of the Holy Spirit is unforgiveness. So Jesus said in Mark 11, 25, And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. Now, why does he say that? Well, he says that because most of us do. Most of us do have this problem. And it might be a parent. It might have been your dad or your mom. It might have been an uncle or an aunt or a friend or a relative or even a boss. So Jesus says, before you start to pray, check to see if there's anybody you've got something against deep in your heart. 
Is there anything, anybody you've got something against? Maybe it's a spiritual leader. Because if, if you pray with resentment and bitterness and unforgiveness in your heart, that resentment and unforgiveness will be a blockage to you getting your, your prayers answered. So Jesus said, if you want a clear communication channel with God and openness to receive what you pray for, before you pray, if there's anything in your heart against anyone, so that leaves out nothing and no one, forgive them and then pray. Now I've got to say, I have 40 years of doing ministry, I've got to tell you, most people have this one. Most people deep in their heart have this one. So I'm just going to give you a second to think about this. But before you do it, I want to tell you, forgiveness is not an emotion, it's a decision. Forgiveness is not an emotion, it is a decision. It's not of the heart, it's of the mind. Forgiveness is transferring the debt that you believe is owed to you by the, 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 the other person. So you believe there's a debt owed to you. And what we want, we want revenge on them. We want them to pay for it or whatever. So it's taking that debt and you're giving it to God. You're saying that debt no longer is mine, it is God's. That allows you to be free. That allows the prison doors that that hurt has put you in to be flung open and for you to step out. So you transfer the debt to God and you live free. This then leaves judgment up to him and frees us to live again. So let's bow our heads again. Just allow the Holy Spirit to show you if there's some hidden root of resentment or bitterness, unforgiveness in your heart. Father, speak to the heart of each one of us here and all the folks online. Lord, speak to our hearts. Show us if there's any areas of unforgiveness in our heart. And Father, I pray that you would reveal the specific name or situation, Father. So just pray this after me. Lord, if there's been in my heart any unforgiveness, any bitterness, any resentment, I renounce it now. I lay it down. If anyone has ever harmed me or wronged me, I forgive them now. I specifically forgive, and then you name the people. You name whoever whoever is God showing you. I specifically forgive my dad. I specifically forgive whoever that is for you. And say that before you say the names. I specifically forgive then the name. I specifically forget and just go through them. And just say after me, Lord, the debt that's owed to me I transfer it to you now. And I thank you, God, for setting me free. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, one more thing I want to say about this forgiveness thing is forgiveness is about releasing you. It's not about absolving the person. It's not about you trusting. Forgiveness and trust are two different things. Some Christians come to me sometimes and they tell me, you know, you haven't truly forgiven unless you've forgotten. 
That's rubbish. You're not God. Only God does that. You're not God. You will remember them. But if you go through this process, the, the heat of that thing, the attachment of that thing will be broken. But you don't go back into that situation. Don't trust somebody. If I had a treasurer, not that I've ever had a treasurer who's done this, so don't take any inference from it. But if they stole a million dollars from us, there'd be consequences to that. I can forgive them, but I'm not going to make them a treasurer again. Does that make sense? So forgiveness and trust are two different things. What you're doing right now is you're forgiving specifically. And you might find as you go through the today, the Holy Spirit will quicken something to you. You need to quickly go through this prayer. The next area is the area of the occult. So this is the seventh blockage that stops us moving in the life and the power of the Holy Spirit. The area of the occult. Now, we've talked about this about this in this series, but let me just reinforce. Any involvement in the occult in any way, things like fortune-telling, Ouija boards, horoscopes, witchcraft, divination, sorcery, having physical objects that represent the occult, there are innumerable different ways in which superstition and satanic cults have invaded our contemporary culture. And all of those, all of those are a blockage to moving in the Holy Spirit's power. A blockage to us moving in the Holy Spirit's power. In Exodus 23, 24, Moses is speaking to the people. And he's talking to them as they're about to go into the land of Canaanite. And Moses is warning the people to have no part whatsoever in the satanic practices of the people who are there. He says, have no association with any of those kind of occult practices. And God's promises are only for those who break totally from the occult in every form. Now, I think I spoke on this on week three or four and kind of went into greater detail. I encourage you to go back and, and have, a, have a look at that. But let me just say to you, the Lord hates idolatry. The first two commandments deal with this sort of thing. You shall not have any other gods. So if you have been involved with the occult in any form, even if you were a kid and you were just mucking around with it. You know, somebody was telling me last week when they were a kid, they went to a seance and it didn't affect them at all. It affected the people. i got to tell you, it affected them. You cannot play around with this stuff. It's like you put your hand in the mud and say, well, the mud didn't stick to me. Yeah, it did. It did. And it comes out in different ways. So anything whatsoever... So today is your opportunity to deal with it. So why don't we bow our heads again? Holy Spirit, I pray that you show us if there's anything that we've done in our life that's been superstitious. Even down to the point of celebrating Halloween and witches and goblins and thinking it's just fun. And yet there's just been doorways. Doing things as a, as a teenager that we thought was just a, just a load of rubbish, like a seance or whatever. Whatever it is. Being involved in the new age. Thank you, Lord. So pray this after me. Lord, if I've ever been involved in the occult, even ignorantly, I confess it as a sin. And I ask you to forgive me and free me from its influence. I commit myself now to never again be involved with those things. Release me from their influence right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Closely associated with that is this worship of false gods. The worship of false god. In Exodus 23, 24, when Moses is talking to the people and saying, do not, do not bow down to their gods, small g. Do not bow, bow down to their gods. We talked about this a couple of series ago. I encourage you to go back and, and look at this. Do not serve them. Have no association with any of those kind of occult practices. And then in Exodus 23, 32, verse 32, it says, And you shall make no covenant. You shall make no covenant with them, nor with their peoples. So listen up. It is possible 
for you to enter into some kind of a covenant with people who have false gods. It is possible for you to enter into some kind of a covenant with people who have false gods. And if you do that, you become involved in the guilt of those people and their false gods. If you do that, you become involved in the guilt of those people and their false gods. Now, there are many of these groups, but a common one that I've mentioned to you before, a common one would be Freemasonry. Freemasonry. So if you're a Freemason or are involved in Freemasonry or it's been in your family, you are under a curse. You are under a curse, not only you, but your family and your descendants. Freemasonry, like so many other cults and sects, is a false religious system. For instance, in these cults and in these systems, in these secret societies, in these satanic places, they have various levels to them um, that you have to go through for you to progress in them and to advance your knowledge or authority within them. And these all lead to the worship of false gods. As I said, Freemasonry is one of these, but it's one of many. But in Freemasonry, they call it a secret society, but so many people have written on it. It's not, not secret so much. One of these levels is called the, the Royal Arch Degree. The Royal Arch Degree, which acknowledges a god whose name is Yah Bul On. Yah Bul On. Yah is short for Jehovah, Bul is short for Baal, and On is short for Osiris. Friends, any system of worship that combines the true God with Baal or Osiris is an abomination in the sight of the Lord. And there are consequences for that. So if there are any people here today or anyone listening online who are involved in Freemasonry or any other cult or sect or any secret societies or satanic organization of which there are many in our world today, and I spoke on this a few weeks ago, and I named a whole bunch of them. So go back and check it out. Either directly yourself, if you've been involved directly yourself, or through your husband, or your father, or some other, other relative, or some guy you've married that you didn't know their family was into this stuff, or girl you married, you know, you need to renounce it. So I want to lead you now in a prayer of renunciation. Now to do that, I'm going to ask you to stand. So I'm going to lead you in this prayer, in the name of the Lord Jesus, to renounce this stuff. And I encourage you to say, again, say these words out loud, um, so your ears hear it. Lord Jesus. I thank you for your love. I declare that my allegiance is to you alone. I want to serve you and love you. If there is in my life or in my family the curse of Freemasonry or any other cult, I renounce it now. And I repent from it now. And I ask you, Lord Jesus, to release me. And to forgive me and break its power over me and my family. Right now, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You can have a seat. So this brings us to the ninth blockage and the, the last blockage in the moving, uh, I'm sure there's others, but there's nine that I have, to the moving and the life and the power of the Holy Spirit and healing. And that is what we've spent the last six weeks talking about, and that is curse. That is curse. Now, the, firstly, the process of release from a curse, and, and most things for that matter, the process of release from a curse is firstly to recognize, to renounce, to repent, and to resist. So say that after me. Recognize, Recognize. renounce, Recognize. repent, and resist. And we can do this because Jesus has made an exchange on the cross of Calvary. 
And he's obtained all those things that I mentioned before, things like forgiveness and life and freedom and healing from the curse because he became a curse for us so that we might receive the blessing. So in it, under eternal law, if you went here last week, check the thing out from last week. I explained this a bit more. But basically, the legal base under eternal law is already there. So God doesn't have to do anything more. But as I said last week, we have to appropriate and enforce what God has done for us to get these things working in our lives. Now, to do that, we need to ascertain the cause of the curse. Not every time, but, but often. And that's the reason why we spent six weeks of me going through stuff, like a counselor. We were going through to help you identify what are the specific areas, what are the behavioral patterns, what are the things that you've been involved with. Because when you break the curse, it's good for you to know. Not every time, but most of the time, it's important for, the, for you to know what you're, you're breaking. It seems to be that's the pattern in Scripture. So if God shows you, then you have to act on what he shows you. So again, the basic pattern of release is found in these four words. To recognize, repent, renounce, and resist. You have to recognize your problem and its cause. A curse cannot land unless there is a cause. You have to recognize what that is, whether it's in your life, in your behavior, your choices, or in your ancestors down the family line. You have to recognize that. Then you need to repent of anything that, that, that's been left open or that you've left open to. it. Then you've got to renounce the curse. And then finally, you've got to resist every attempt of Satan to keep you under the curse because he will come back. So we'll break things over you today. And I'll teach you or I'll talk about how you actually move on into freedom and in the blessing. But you've got to know the enemy is going to come back at you. He's going to come back at you and tell you, oh, that's a lot of bunkum. You know, he's going to try and, and, and fool you again. And you need to resist every attempt. Now, in this recognizing, repenting, renouncing, and resisting, there is a process to do this. So the first step in that process is that you need to establish a clear scriptural basis for the release of the curse. So last week I gave you one, Galatians 3, 13, and 14. Christ has redeemed us from the curse, having been made, having been made a curse for us. Now, some other verses that, that apply to this thing are things like Ephesians 1 7. In him, that's Jesus, in him we have redemption through his blood. Colossians 1 13 and 14. God has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of the Son of his love. In 1 John 3 8, the second half of that verse, for this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Then again in Luke 10, 19, Behold, Jesus says, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. All the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. So when you've settled this, friends, you've got to understand this. There is no satanic power that is greater than the power of Jesus living in you. So he is a con man. He will try and get you confused. He will try and get you living under a lie. So you need to understand, you have a greater power within you. Greater is he who is in me than he that is in the world. Jesus is the authority. Jesus is the power. Do not muck around in the spirit realm. It will kill you. You need to put your feet on the rock of Jesus. You need to understand this, friend. It is, a, it is a terrifying thing to fall under the judgment of an almighty God. And there are so many people who treat it like it's, like it's fluffy. This is so serious. You need to understand this. Jesus' power is over the enemy. So when you've settled this, the next step to doing this in this process is you need to con simply confess your faith in Christ. Because as Hebrews 3, 1 says, Jesus, he's the high priest of our confession. Then you need to commit yourself to obedience. And this leads us to intimacy and relationship with God. Remember, that, you know, Moses talks about in 28, you know, walking in the blessing, he, listening to God, 
doing what he says. That's what it is. That, basically, that's talking about an intimate relationship. When you're intimate with God, the blessing of God will be in you. doesn't matter about the circumstances around you. Your life might still be kind of doing things around you, but you'll have a peace beyond all understanding. You will have a joy. The joy of the Lord will be your strength in those times. You will know God. You will know God and the working of his power inside you. So you need to commit yourself to obedience. You can't, you can't play with this stuff. You cannot play with this, this commitment to God, this commitment to Jesus, but then going and doing everything else for the rest of the week. Because it's commitment to Jesus that you come you know, once in a while to church. No, once in a while to community. Once in a while to giving. Once in a while to do it. No, you are committing yourself your whole life to live under the Lordship of Jesus. And if you don't, you open doorways. You open doorways. Can I just say that to you? You open doorways if you're not living in the obedience and intimacy with Jesus. And the doorways will be doorways to bondage in your life. So we need to break them, friends. So the fourth step is confess, confess any known sins of yourself or your ancestors. So just like you confessed your own sin a few minutes ago, there are many, many different possibilities of sin in our family line. And you have to identify yourself with that sin in your family that brought the curse upon your family. Then you need to confess it on behalf of your family by any of the ancestors or others related to you. You need to confess that stuff. That's why we spent six weeks of me counseling you on how to move through this stuff. So you can recognize this stuff. Again, 1 John 1 night. If you confess your sins, he is faithful and just. And will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The fifth act, uh, step in this process is to forgive all those who may be the cause of the curse. Forgive all those who may be the cause of the, of the curse in your life. Because if you don't forgive, then the unforgiveness you carry becomes a barrier to the answer of your prayer. Jesus said again, when you stand, pray and forgive if you have anything against anybody. And friends, that might be your parent. That might be your dad or your mom. It might be a grandparent. You might have done the homework that I've asked you to do, and you might have recognized there was an ancestor, you know, four generations back or three generations back who was into this stuff. You know, my ancestor was a witch. I didn't even know it. They were a witch. Or my ancestor was was into Freemasonry, or my ancestor was into... All the other stuff. And you need to forgive them. You need to forgive them. If you've got indigenous background inside you, you know, and those indigenous cultures right across the world are spiritists. And they open the door up to family lines. And you need to identify that. And then you need to go through this whole process. Again, forgiveness is a decision. It's not an emotion. It's a choice. It's transferring the debt to God, and by doing that, it releases you. The ninth, or the sixth part of this process is you need to renounce all contact with the occult or with secret societies. Get rid of any contact with any objects of the occult. You know those souvenirs you get on holidays, little Buddhas or whatever, or photographs or pictures of the sun god from Mexico or wherever it is. You need to get rid of them. You simply cannot keep in your house anything that in any way binds you to the occult. Moses said. If you take an accursed thing into your house, you become accursed like the thing. And then lastly, release yourself in the name of Jesus. Because the word of God says, whatever we release on earth shall be released in heaven. And whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Now when you've done all this, you're legally entitled to full release from every curse over you or your family. So I'm going to lead you in a prayer now, a simple prayer. Um, for breaking every curse over your family. Now, you need to pray this. I can't do this for you. You need to pray this. You know, I can't break the curse over your life if you haven't met the conditions. So if you know something in your world right now, and you, all this stuff we've gone through the last six weeks or even today, and you haven't, you haven't dealt with it, then, then it just creates an open door. So I can't break that curse. It's up to you now. Now, when I say this, when we go to say this in a minute, nothing dramatic may happen. You may not feel any immediate change at all. And on the other hand, sometimes 
things quite dramatic can happen. Sometimes people fall down. Sometimes they're released um, of an evil spirit uh, through a scream or something else comes out of them. But whatever happens, folks, don't focus on the manifestation. Focus on the reality of Christ in your prayer. If there is something happening to the person next to you, don't let it concern you. Focus on Jesus. Focus on Jesus. If you're the one with the manifestation happening in you, just thank God that you're getting some results. If you're the one that it's not happening in, just thank God that it's not happening in you. Do you know what? But focus on Jesus. Focus on Jesus. Now, again, nobody here has to say this prayer. It's entirely voluntary. You might think, well, I don't have any problems in this area. And that's great. Praise God. Personally, I'm always glad to say these prayers um, because I, uh, I want to make absolutely sure there's nothing over me, that everything is clear in heaven above me. So that's what we're going to do now. So why don't you stand? So if you, if you don't know Jesus, the first part of this prayer will be um, a prayer for you to come to know Jesus. And you, you can get to know Jesus immediately. It doesn't take God long to save you. It just takes your heart to be willing. So that's the first part of this prayer, and then we're going, going to go into the breaking. So I encourage you, just have your hands up a little bit. This is a, a sign of surrender, just where it's comfortable for you. Just say after me, Lord Jesus Christ, I believe that you are the Son of God, that you are the only way to God, that you died on the cross for my sins, and you rose again from the dead. I renounce and repent from all my sins and my family's sins, and I turn to you now. Jesus, I thank you for your forgiveness. And from now on, I want to live for you. I want to hear your voice. I want to do what you tell me. And I thank you that you release me from any curse over my life. And I receive this now by faith. Okay, Father, I thank you that you are made a curse, that I might be redeemed from the curse and might receive the blessing. And because of what you did for me on the cross, I now release myself from every curse and every evil influence. And every dark shadow or evil spirit over me or my family from any source whatsoever. I release myself now in the name of Jesus. Okay. So I'm going to pray for you now. And I'm going to break things over you right now. And now, Lord... Because of your people's prayer here today, as your representative here, I break every curse that has been over any of these people or their family lines. I revoke those curses, known or unknown. I release them from them. In the name of Jesus, the Son of God, I declare that everyone who has prayed this prayer is released from any satanic influence in Jesus' name. I declare to you, Satan, that you have no more claims, no more access to their lives, to their families, to their children, to their businesses. I declare that they have been lifted out of the domain of darkness and translated into the kingdom of the Son of God's love. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, for making the way for us that you became a curse that we might receive your blessing and live free. And I speak freedom over you, friend. In the spirit realm, I release you from any curse, that it all falls off you, that it all any ancestral thing falls off you, 
anything from your mom or dad falls off you. In Jesus' name. And we thank you, Lord. Now let's just start to profess our thanks and praise to God. Praise your name. Come on, church. Praise your name. This is one of the ways of invoking, enforcing the, the blessing. Oh, we bless you, Lord. We praise your holy name. We give you the glory. We thank you, Jesus, that you are the King of kings and you are the Lord of lords. That Jesus, that you are the kinsman redeemer. You are the Alpha and the Omega. We praise you, Jesus. You are Jehovah Rapha, our healer. You are El Shaddai. You are the Alpha and the Omega. Oh, we praise you, Lord. You are Emmanuel, God with us. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 So just through doing simple things like this, things change in the spirit world. Now, another thing that I find is really helpful in the past is to confess it to another human being. And it is so powerful. So I want to encourage you to turn around to somebody um, around you and look them in the eye and say, this is going to come up here. Jesus Christ is Lord, and he has set me free from the curse, and I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. So say that after me. Jesus Christ is Lord. And he has set me free from the curse. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So turn around to somebody and look them in the eye and you say that. Go on, turn it. Confession is so powerful. You guys online, you do it as well to somebody. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord, and he has set me free from the curse. And I shall not die, but I shall live and declare the works of the Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Can I get the band back up, please? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're going to just we're gonna just seal. You can have a seat if you want. Um, I'll get you to stand back up in a second, but you can have a seat now if you want. So we're going to come to communion. And as you take it by faith, you're affirming what we've just prayed. The whole service, I told you last week, this is what we're going to do. So the whole service, we've just prayed through what Jesus has done on the cross. And during this time, as I said, healing is often manifested. So if you have a healing need in your life, we're going to pray for you. And what I'm going to encourage you to do... And for all of us, if you've never had communion with us, what we do is when the music starts, we come forward, you just take a biscuit and um, a cup and, and um, go back to your seat and partake in communion when, you, when, when it's right for you, for you guys on the, on the balcony there. There's one there at the bottom of the stairs. But if you, if you have a healing need, so um, uh, could the folks that are going to pray for healing, could you just come out and just stand up the sides for me, please? Thank you. Um, praise the Lord. So all, the, all these people are available for prayer for healing. Now here, here's the deal. They're not here to counsel you. They're not here to li listen to your life story. They're just going to pray for healing. So we, we need you to just be brief. So if, if you need prayer for healing, come take communion and then go to the, one of these sides and then one of these folks, they will pray for you. They'll anoint you with oil. And they will pray for you. And, um, and they're just going to pray for the exchange. Remember the exchange? Christ was wounded that we might be healed. He took our stripes upon him that we might be healed. The exchange. They're going to be praying for that. So you come up and say, I've got, a, I've got a bad back or a bung leg or whatever. And they'll just anoint you with all and say, God, we pray the exchange in Jesus' name. Be healed. Be healed. Okay? And then for you to go back to your seat and just... Spend some time in worship with God, and let's just see. You know, let's just see. Somebody said to me before, what happens after if nothing happens? Well, it's up to God. You know, it's like even the prayer in the prayer. It's like it's all up to God. It's not about a person. It's not about a bad guy called Arthur, you know. It's not about a band or the songs. It's about Jesus. Everything is about Jesus. It's about glorifying Jesus. It's about you walking free. It's about you walking free. Now, if you don't need prayer for healing, that's great. Just come and do communion, go back to your seat and just worship. Let's create an atmosphere of worship. Amen.
Okay, so when you see these guys in one or two words, tell them what it is, and then they'll pray for you. Okay, so why don't we be upstanding? Father, I just thank you for this time. I thank you, Lord God, that you have, you have given your life on Calvary's tree. Lord, your body was broken. Your body was broken that we might be healed. Your blood was shed that we might be forgiven and set free. That you have set a new covenant. And today you have said, I have set before you blessing or curse, life or death. Now choose life. And Father, we have chosen life today. We have prayed and we have chosen life. And we thank you for that. Now, Lord, we want to seal it through taking communion. And Lord, manifest your healing your healing to us, Lord, in so many different ways. In Jesus' name. And everybody say it. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So you get you guys about to pray. Why don't you come and take communion first? So mercy, Daniel, why don't you come and take communion first? Praise the Lord. I don't want you guys to miss out. You're gonna minister, but this is about you just being just be open. Just take communion. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So if you guys just want to take communion and then put the cups aside and then the guys will come and pray. Hallelujah. So just as the band starts, um, feel free to come forward for communion and seal what it is that you've done and be joyful because Jesus is the center of it all. Amen? Okay, let's do that. Thank you.
the center of it all. Praise you, Jesus. At the center Jesus. of it all. Jesus. Jesus. Come on, church, let's worship. At the center Jesus. of it all. He set you free. He set you free. Jesus. We bless you, Lord God. We thank you, Jesus. God, and all things are God. Praise you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Merciful are you, Lord. Merciful are you. Good and kind and generous are you, Lord. We bless you, Lord God. Father, you love us so much. You unravel me, Lord. You unravel me, Lord. Jesus. Jesus. Oh, God, we love you. We love you, Lord. Come on, church. Come on, press in. Press in. And this is the one who's just set you free. Come on. Come on. This is you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus. Father, from my enemies. Oh, yeah. all my Come on, just abandon yourself. Come on, abandon yourself. Forget about whoever's standing around. Just abandon yourself. Abandon yourself into your healing, into your freedom. His name is Jesus. Jesus. From my enemies to all my fears of God. I'm no longer Praise you, Lord.
Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. Praise you, God. Praise you, God. Oh, God, we bless you, Lord. You're a slave. You're free. You're free. Glory. Glory. Glory to God. I'm no longer a slave to fear, for I am a child of God. Sing that again. I'm no longer a slave to fear, for I am a child of God, and I'm no Whatever is in place of that word fear, if you feel like you have been enslaved to something, if you feel like it's a sin that that you've been unable to get out of, God has delivered us and we are His children. And as His children, our inheritance is freedom and our inheritance is life abundantly under our shepherd, the King Jesus. So whether you want to sing it out loud or just just pray, Praise Just you, reaffirm, reaffirm that as oh, his child, Jesus. you have been set free from fear or, or whatever sin you felt has been has been holding you or whatever curse Jesus. you um, have identified maybe has Jesus, been over you. Um, we're just going to have a little bit of time now just to, um, we'll, we'll, we'll sing that out again. But if, if it's fear for you, then sing fear. If it's something else for you, let's sing that. Let's. Let's believe and trust in what yeah, the word of God says. Yeah, even if no. even if it's different to how you feel, the truth is the truth, and that's just the facts. So let's just um, spend a bit of time singing that chorus, and you put whatever word in there is, um, is the truth for you and what God has delivered you from, because he has. We are his children, and he Thank has set us Jesus. free. Hallelujah. And just, just before you do that, Rowan, where are you? Rowan Burgess? There you go. Steph, can I borrow your mic for a sec? Just you, you explain what you saw. So when Arthur was praying um, about curses lifting off people and, and spirits lifting off people, in my mind's eye, I could see ghostly figures lifting off all over people all over the church. <laughs> the encouragement is for those that didn't think it happened, it, it happened. happened. It happened. Yeah. So when we do what Steph has just explained there, you declare it. Yeah, you want some? I yeah. just, um, when <laughs> Rowan said that, my heart leapt because when we prayed for release over curses, I just saw great big armies of angels with swords drawn running this stuff through, just slicing it off you, just piercing it through the middle. So it's not just gone, it's dead. It's over. Amen. It's finished. Amen. I'm, a, I'm no longer. Come on. Hallelujah, Jesus. And you put in there what it is. For I am a child of God. Praise you, Father. I'm no longer a slave to fear or whatever it is. For I am a child of God. Put that word in there. I'm no longer. Praise the Lord. So, Hilda, you want to just share what you just okay. shared? When I came in here this morning, a few people know that I, I could hardly walk with pain in my hip. And I had prayer, and I just prayed again now, and the pain was gone. Amen. Amen. You got a word? The Lord is telling me that there are many people here who still 
don't believe the power of God. I'm telling you now, many of you are doubting. But when you go home, things are going to move. Things are going to happen like never before. You're going to be amazed at what the Lord is doing. It's happening right now within you, even though you're not feeling it. It's not an emotion. It's not a feeling. It's happening in the spiritual world. Spirits are going. They're going, they're going. And the curses have been broken more than you realise. Some of you don't believe it, but things are going to move through the week. Through the week, you're going to see family members come to the Lord like never before. You're going to see other family members. Curses are going to be broken. Things are going to be different. They're going to be different. You're going to say, boy, what's happened to you? And then the Lord's going to reaffirm in your heart. It's curse. Something's happened down the end. The ancestors, they've been broken. Your grandmother, your great-grandmother, your great-grandfather, things in the past you didn't even know about have been broken today broken in the spiritual world and you will see the manifestations here on earth in your own life in your own family in your own world things have been broken things are going to happen gradually for some people things are going to happen straight away for others some of you are going to go home feeling different within you and you're not going to be quite sure what it was But the Lord's going to show you. And over many weeks, you're going to see things happen in your family, in your neighbours, in people you speak to. Some of you are now going to start having words of knowledge like you have never, ever, ever known. The Lord's going to say to you things that you didn't know were right. You're going to be talking to somebody. You're going to suddenly say something. You're going to think, where has that come from? It's going to be a word of knowledge from the Lord because you're going to become more powerful in the spiritual realm. You're going to see so many things happen in your own world that you're not going to be able to believe it. But it's God. And God is doing a mighty thing within you and within this church. Things are now going to start moving like never before. People are going to start prophesying. People are going to be speaking in tongues that they haven't spoken before. People are going to be healed. Words of knowledge are going to happen. Gifts of the Spirit are going to manifest like not ever before has happened in this place. Mark my words, this is a new beginning for this day. It's a new beginning for this church. And it's a new beginning for many of you that are here believe it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> there you go. Just for anybody who doesn't know, um, this amazing lady has been moving in the gift of prophecy in our church for about 30 years. So when she comes forward, she, I just say, you got a word? She says, yeah, I just give it the mic now. I listen to everybody else, but not to her. So take on board what she's saying. It's a promise of God. And we serve the King of Kings, don't we? The King of Kings. Amen. Father, we just praise you. Hallelujah. If you want the gifts of the Spirit in your life, just raise your hands. Father, I I pray for a release. I pray for a release. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Father God, I pray in Jesus' name. Lord, a breaking now of every blockage. Lord, I pray, Lord God, the fire hydrant to be turned on. I pray, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, the gift of heavenly language, the gift of the word of knowledge, word of wisdom, discernment of spirits, healings, Father God, the gift of faith, in Jesus' name. Lord, all the gifts, Father God, Lord, that you have available to us. Spirit, give them as you see fit and in the times that you want. But Lord, release it. They're all blockages. They've been gone now. Lord, I pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I pray for a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit. I pray for rivers, rivers of, of living water to flow up from within us, Lord, for a wave of the Holy Spirit to flow over us, Lord God, not just in this moment, but all days, every day, Father God, that we would know you, that we would live in you, Father, in Jesus' name. And if you believe it and you want it, you say, let it be so, Lord, in my life, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's sing our next song, guys. Oh, praise you, Father. King of kings, let's declare it, church. Hallelujah. In the darkness, we were waiting without hope and without light, but Jesus, but Jesus has come. We were waiting without hope, without light. 
Jesus. Jesus, you came to fulfill the law and the prophets. To the cradle and the bird. From the cradle and the endless glory. Uh, come on, church. Come on, wine press. Come on, all you folks at home watching online. Praise the Father. Praise the Son. Praise the Father. Praise the Son. Praise, praise the Spirit. Three in one. Three in one. God of glory. Hallelujah. And Jesus came to reveal the kingdom. To, to reveal, reveal the kingdom come. To, to redeem. To redeem the whole creation. You did not despise the cross. For even in your suffering, you got to the other side. Hallelujah, Jesus. In the morning, you moved. All of heaven held his breath. Till that song Hallelujah. was moved for good. Oh, yes. Glory. And then the tombs and the angels stood in awe. Come on, church. Come on, let's praise. Praise the Let it come out of your mouth. Fill your lungs and sing it out. Praise the Spirit. Three in one. God of glory. Majesty. Praise forever to the King of kings. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Friends, to continue to live in freedom, you need to listen to God and do what He says. Draw close to Him. Stay living in praise and thankfulness. Stay close to Jesus because you will be tested. Resist the devil, and when you've done everything to stand, then stand. Stay in an alive, active church community, whether it's wine press or somewhere else. I don't care. Just get in one. And stay in faith and declare the works of our God. Amen. Amen. You know the story. 18 months ago, the Holy Spirit said to me, preach on blessings and curse. And then 
We, so I prepared 18 months ago. He didn't release me to start preaching it until October. I believe it was divine appointments for us. You have sat under the counseling of the Holy Spirit for the last six or seven weeks in this area of your life. And today was not an accident. Today was not an accident. God is doing a work. That word that Lynn had before, that was fantastic. You know, so just live in that. Just live in it. You know, just live in it. And when the devil comes to tempt you, just tell him to go to hell. In Jesus' name. I just, I, just, I just want us to bless you. And I want us to bless one another. And there's a great song called The Blessing. So I just want to finish this series this time um, by singing that song. And then afterwards, I know we've got a bit over time, but it's like we've had a two-hour doctor session this morning. And the Holy Spirit's done work in all of us. So why don't we finish this? And then I'd really just bless you. And uh, If you're new and you want to um, come over, we have a lounge room over here. It'll be open after the service. Come and say good day to us. Otherwise, stay and have a cuppa. And uh, most of all, go and live in the freedom. Spend some time with Jesus today, thanking and praising. Thanking and praising. And tell others. Tell others in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, Lara. Thanks, Steph. Thanks, Ben. Thanks, Seth. <laughs>
Amen and amen. Be blessed, Wine Press. Be blessed. And um, yes, Lord God, we just thank you for everything that you've done today. God, we commit it to you. And um, we honor you and we thank you.